Oh yes. Morning viewers. Woo. Rain is pouring down. <laughs> yeah, morning viewers. I'm Jerry McFadden, the host of this program. And this morning, as usual, we continue our, our show. Um, looking beneath the surface. As we look at members of the assembly, every single one of them will be having this chat or this discussion with them on Tobago updates. As we look at their lives and their involvement in politics as members of the Tobago House of Assembly, even the councillors who have a particular, who have their particular role to play as well, the minority leader and even Mr. Watson Duke as well. So all those members of the assembly will be given a chance and an opportunity to talk with us here, I'm host of the program, and we'll continue to hear their views, hear their concerns, and to see what are their priorities, of course. And this continues as season two, from the 14th of November to the 6th of December. So with me this morning is uh, one of the very youthful and dynamic um, representatives, Mr. Niall George. Niall, welcome to the program. <laughs> Hi, thanks for the welcome. Good morning to Tobago and uh, all the others viewing out there. Yeah, very well. So you are representative for the what area again? Plymouth Blackrock District. Plymouth Blackrock, Blackrock District. And um, you are the assemblyman. And before I go further, I must just say um, there were people from the two programs, people who commenting on the first program in particular, who were indicating um, quite a few persons, uh, why we continue to say assembly woman and you say assembly man, you know, you're not saying assembly woman for the ladies. I had to explain to them, and maybe I could say it here again, that the law provides for members of the assembly who are elected to be called, whether they're male or female, to be called assembly man. You know, so that is what the law prescribed. But I could recall in my days of the assembly, and I think it was Deborah Moore McGinn's at the time who was a member of the assembly and she felt very um, peeved by it, although she was an attorney, or well, she is an attorney still. Uh, and she wrote to the assembly formally and requested that she be addressed as assembly woman or member of the assembly, Deborah Moore McGinn's. And I think they went with that and they, they described call her um, assembly woman. And I m must recall too, even my days with Robinson in the early assembly, you know, he uh, looked at that also, while he said it was quite legal, you know, he was saying that maybe we should place greater emphasis on and as describing the persons, <laughs> where they are, whether they are counselors or whether they are male or female, they should be emphasize them and point them out as members of the assembly instead of going specifically to assemblyman as the law requires, as the law states, this is how they will be called, you know? So we just want to have that clarified and explained, you know, as a former member of the assembly, I know this came up from time to time in the early days uh, at the Tobago House of Assembly. So as we move on and we chatting with Niall George here, and Niall, you are assistant secretary in which area? In the Division of Settlements, Public Utilities and Rural Development. Yeah, that's right. And, um, and uh, of course, we're chatting here with you and we want to first let us look at the early days growing up in your community and so on, what it is like growing up in your early days. Because this program, we just don't want to look at the hard politics and what you're doing and who you're criticizing or who criticize you. We want to see the person, Niall George, you know, this person that sometimes come across very private. Um, well, Mr. McFarlane, I believe that I grew up in a gem of a village called Plymouth. <laughs> Some of the wider community of Tobago may not look at Plymouth that way, but ask anyone that grows up in Plymouth what they think about that village and it would be something totally different. You know, um, growing up you had football, you had many beaches, you know, it, it's just, we, we uh, um, at a younger age, we would catch crabs. Mm -hmm. We would, there were so many different activities that you could take part in as a Plymouth person. Um, if you look at the, the history of Plymouth, rich with sports persons as well. You have many people that would, would have represented not only the island, but the country for various sports. We have people like Daniel Cyrus. Even recently now, we have people like 
Kimika Forbes, Karen mm -hmm. Forbes, mm -hmm. you know, so if you looked at character athletes, there are people like Kenija Williams, we had people like um, who sprinter there, uh, Kellyanne Baptiste, you know, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, it's yeah. a very rich in talent. You know, we have won the football competition so many times. The, me and the Chiefs say we jab at one another mm -hmm. as to who has the better football team, I know. He would have to take second place at that until he, he, he until, until he get to know more about Stokely Vale. Yes, until he doesn't. Until Sidis <laughs> are able to say that they have competed in um, Super League competitions and such. You know what? We would give them some leeway in Tobago, but at a higher level, that would have to go to Stokely Vale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And um, you know, our people may not know that in Plymouth, at one stage in the early days, we had three steel bands in Plymouth. You know, the only village in the whole of Tobago and Trinidad and Tobago. That at one stage in our history, we had three steel bands coming out of Plymouth. As a matter of fact, we should also note, as a Plymouthian myself, I'm proud to be, you know, we were the ones from one of those steel bands, I think it was SO Wonder Harps at the time, that contributed the steel band <laughs> to start Cats and Jammers in our neighboring community village of Black Rock. And when the fellas on the base, see, um, Bill Ramsey's father or uncle or one of them going with the pan, they pass by the beach to go with the pan. They nearly run them down and beat them because they thought they thief the pan. Never to know Josie and them fellas, give them fellas the pan to go and start up mm -hmm. the, the thing in Black Rock, you know. So the Plymouth community has been known for a number of interesting things in the past. But this is not my story, this is your story that we want to discuss here this evening. But you come across, um, Niall, as sometimes as a private person and it's interesting to see um how you manage in this public space with public responsibility and this private persona that you have well mr mcfarlane the reality is i entered myself and i am the one that chose to serve so i understand some of the responsibilities that come with it i mean it's on hyperspeed now and some people mm -hmm. do not really don't know where to draw the line um we are here to serve but we aren't mm -hmm. owned and we are asking for a respectful level a level where each and everyone must have a cutoff point we are also humans we aren't robots each of us need our space just like the public needs their space at certain times but we are here to serve. It may not happen at the exact instant that you would like it to happen, but it will happen. Of course, there are particular procedures to follow when yeah. the public make their request to you and, and so on. You know, you want to explain that further. Sometimes people ask you some particular things or requests and then you have to, you just go and say, go and do that or go and do that or go and thing, you know. <laughs> explain some of these challenges that you have, especially executing your public responsibility. Well, I'm very happy that you, you brought up that point because members of the public think that as the politician, you can just make things happen. No, it's not that way. There are policies, there are procedures. We are the policy makers. We are the ones that would implement the policy. But that would then be carried out by the, the public servants. And they have checks and balances. If you have heard of the Auditor General, they have to, to toe that line. There are laws that govern the country, and we have to follow these laws in, in the due process to get things done. And I, as a politician, do not want to get myself in trouble. And I certainly would not like to see any of the public servants that serve along us in their daily duties get themselves on the wrong side of the law mm -hmm. yeah and um we have a lot of that going on you know people going on the wrong side of the law i think pretty much recording couple uh, uh, two murders or something like that oh, well one person was from Plymouth, and another person from Plymouth was involved in another kind of shooting and so on but you know it all comes back and i must ask you this question as we move forward do you think that good parenting if you should talk for yourself was responsible for getting to where you are today and how you see public and community life. Now we're involved in politics. You think that good parenting, or give us an idea how good parenting helped you? Good parenting is very important in terms of, of raising children. Um, anyone within the community of Plymouth 
could <laughs> tell you about the relationship with me and my son. My, he's 15 years of age, and sometimes when he, the excitement he he has when he sees me, I have to say, Jai, tune it down, you're getting to be a big man now, you know? And um, my father was absent for a period of my life. And my mom, Phil Alman George, thank you for all the sacrifices that you have made to get me to this point and those that you continue to make daily. My mom is a prayer warrior. And even before leaving home today, I heard her praying for me to, before I got to the show, you know, and it is very instrumental, the role of parents. If you look at, at the, um, the crime situation, I believe one of the root cause is absentee fathers. Mm -hmm. And you have these young men going out onto the blocks and you have people that would be giving them certain, <laughs> what is called gifts, and they look at that as something that they do not get at home. They are now willing to do things that they aren't even willing to do at home for these people because they look at that as fatherly love, not understanding that, that they are being used. And that is where fathers have to come in. You know, you, you also have the situation of, of females being breadwinners and they have to be out there all this time looking to earn a dollar. And that leaves the children to the power of the devices. And we all know that devices can be used for positive, both positive and negative, you know, so without the monitoring. And, and so they are, they are left to the, to the powers of the, of the world, basically. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you mentioned a very important point of um, 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 absentee fathers. But you are a fantastic example in spite of an absentee father absent father your mother and is one of the exceptional mothers i'm saying that very openly and so on without any fear is one of the exceptional mothers you were fortunate of an exceptional mother because in spite of the fact that your father was not around for some time you know she took charge and ensured that you were involved in stupidness and that kind of thing and and, and foot, criminal activity and all this kind of thing i mean tribute has to be paid to, to, to her. So in spite of the fact that, that um, absentee fathers can contribute, but there are some strong mothers like Pearl Alman George, you know, who ensure and take a responsibility as a parent, not, for her own ch not only for her own children, but also for the wider community. You know, you should expand on that a little bit. You know how you grew up with your mother. First how of, she used to blaze you when you read <laughs> First of all, Mr. McFarlane, I never said my father was absentee because he was a police officer and he was transferred for a while. Right. right. So mm. I do not want it to come across as my father abandoned me. And I, I would mm. like to have that clear. made mm. very yeah, clear. I would, I but very due clear. to the, the situation, he, he would not have been around as much as I would have liked him to be around. The relationship mm. that we had was not a very strong one. So that's all, what I'm speaking about. And I use that as an example to make sure that that does not happen with my son. Now it could go the other way around where people look at that and think that that is the correct thing, you know? And I encourage fathers to, to have a very, very strong input, especially into the, the lives of their young sons, because these, these sons, they, trust me, sons and their mothers are, are very delicate things. They say girl children are for their fathers and, and boy children are for their mothers. And maybe because of that special love, the mothers allow the boy children to get away with a, a bit more than the fathers would. And that's where we have to step up and, and play our part, you know. And I, as I said before, you have to have your children know love. Mm -hmm. you, and I believe that part of the crime problem is that you are seeing a lot of young men that they don't know love. It's very easy for them to do these vile acts because they haven't experienced much love in their life. Much love, much guidance. Much and guidance. So. And what, so. what would have happened to you if you had a, 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 the, 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 the situation where you come home with some weed in a bag and your mother see you? What your mother would have done to you? 
I can't even <laughs> imagine that situation. <laughs> Probably now, George deceased because my mother was a, a very strict person, no nonsense mm. person, very strict mother. You know, I, I could give you an instance when I was in primary school. I had a poem to learn and mom, I did that. So mommy asked me to, to say the poem. And I was like, mommy, but I didn't learn the poem. And these were the days when she would teach writer classes. Got into the transport. And she was like, well, you had a whole week to learn it. So between Signal Hill and Plymouth, you have to learn it otherwise. And that's just to show you the kind of person and mother that my mother is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, parental guidance is so important, boy. It's just amazing. Parents and guardians, their input into young people's lives, so important. I mean, they're not just their children or their grandchildren or their relatives, eh? but their influence on the society or the community is also extremely important, boy. So um, we move on to your getting into politics and the duties and the responsibilities. Um, you're responsible for the, um, this area of Plymouth, Black Rock. That is the name of the district. Yes. And how many villages involved in that area? Well, there are about nine pockets. So the name Plymouth, Black Rock really doesn't do the district service. Mm -hmm. We have areas of Bethel, Mount Irving, Pleasant Prospect, Black Rock, Plymouth, Mary's Hill, Wim, Back Hill too? No, Back Hill would be under Darrell Spring Wim. We're talking about the... Um, Parts of Union and Mom, Mom, Philadelphia Mary's area. Hill. The Philadelphia area of Wim. Um, the community centre is actually in the district of Plymouth Black Rock. Then you have the Union area. You have the Mounty Orange Hill Road area. So it's a very wide expanse. And it's that way for a reason. And you said for, for about seven pockets or villages, I call nine them? Nine. Nine. Yeah, yeah. You have the Fairbanks Mountain area. Yes, that's another area. That's too. another area as well. So that is almost the same area that I had when I was in the, in the politics. That we used to call it the same Plymouth Black Rock. And it's almost the same area, but except for Bethesda and Golden Lane and so on in that area. The part of that area was included too. Included as well. You know. Mm. So how you manage, that is, the, well, that is what I want to get to. This, these are these nine communities or, or, or pockets as you call them. <laughs> I don't too like the word. But um, these nine um, little communities or villages involved in this district. How you make out in terms of managing and dealing and serving these people in well, that community? Well, it would be impossible for me to be in all of these areas at one time. So you have to develop contacts that would keep you informed as to what is taking place in, the com in these areas as well. So there are persons within the district that I have regular communication with, along with walking around and, and having walkabouts and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, there are persons within the communities that, are, that keep me abreast of what is going on. So a problem arises, I get a phone call, either myself or my field officer would, would arrive and we would be able to assess the situation. But you have field officers in, in those nine districts? Well, it's... Nine areas? The field officer has to traverse the, the areas. That's, the part, mm. that's part of their job. They, they would have gotten into the job knowing that it's a large area and it would take some doing and they have been doing a, a very good job. Mm -hmm. So the whole district know who the field officer is? The whole district? By now, who the field officer? By now, they would. Mm -hmm. by now they I thought you'd have a system in addition to that, where each month you have a day for each of the nine village or every quarter, you have a plan where you're going to cover a visit at least to all those areas where people can meet with well, you or something. Yeah. The, um, that is the new plan that is being set. So, um, Mr. McFarlane, I'm new at this. And in going, as I go along, I learn mm -hmm. and I understand the need. So some of the things, one of the things that I would do, depending on the number of persons that make appointments for the district office day, I would then 
call them and go visit them because it improves visibility as well. You know, if the number is small, Good it would idea. be easier for me. Some, and sometimes people, when you go to the, the areas, when persons would see you speaking to, to the person that made the appointment, I don't, it's very easy to, to accommodate them as well. So sometimes people wouldn't come into your district office. They just would. For whatever the reason, they just would not come to the district office. They may have an issue that they would like to have dealt with, but they just wouldn't come to the district office. I, I, I can't tell why, but it's something You have very, one district office? One district office. And you ever went about going, giving the number and the contact where the district office is for the district? Yes, the is. numbers, the but general numbers in the communities, and of, so on. Of course, it, the, um, it's posted on Facebook as well, you know. Mm. So it's the, the, the district office office number is uh, is out there, and news spreads fast. The news spreads fast, so it's mm. it's common knowledge within the district. Mm. Yeah, I can't emphasize as a former member of the assembly. I can't emphasize how important it is to have your physical presence sometimes in in these communities regularly whether it's through funerals or christening or wedding or any sporting activity in the community and do wait until something happened and you know well let's say i ain't seen the assemblyman mm -hmm. you could always say well listen i was in this wedding i was this place i was this function i was in this school doing something you know people need to know that and so on and do wait until people call you from time to time but you know there's a lot of work and there's a lot of strategies and approaches that you could use to stay in contact and you know we should try and contact those we should chat more about that sometime but it is very important physical presence not beat that yes. notwithstanding all the technology that we have physical presence in these small in this small little island on the planet <laughs> is very important people want to know that me see you he come here and he deal with me see you. he come right at my house and he talk to me about this you know, he come and he console me over this incident or something that happened. He come and he express his condolence or something. Okay, yeah. People love to say that. You know, so you have to try and find ways to reach out there. You can reach everybody every day every at the day. same time. And they have to understand too that you have your private life too and you have the other areas in the district that you have to see about. Well, you know? um, as you spoke about funerals, our district is, is in mourning because currently there are four deaths within the district. I'd like to take this opportunity to send condolences to the friends and family of Tim Soverell. Kim? Tim Soverell. Mm -hmm. He's a, well, was a centurion. Um, we were oh, able to... Old man Soverell on Diplomat Road? Eh? Yes, we were able to, to rename his, mm -hmm. his street after him before he died. Um, I remember I, I was able to carry a, a gift bag for him for his birthday and it was, he was very lively. He had his, this story about getting licks because he had to milk his, his cow before going to school and probably the, the cow milk was the, the sustenance that got him to be a centurion. Um, I also, the condolences go out to the family and friends of Alva Barton. <laughs> Nerissa Penny Williams. Nerissa. Nerissa Penny Williams. That's Black Rock. Mm. In the Black Rock area. Mm -hmm. um, Franca Charles. From where? Plymouth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Carol Harry. Cabot? Carol. Oh, Carol. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's a very sad time for us and, and I'd like to take an opportunity for us to pay attention to our personal health as well. You know, mm -hmm. exercise point. is very important. Even if it's 10, 10 minutes, it goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, um, I almost forgot George Richardson. Josie? Shuckle, otherwise known as Shuckle. He passed on Tuesday as well. So, oh, the son, Josie's son. You son, son, live in Black Rock? Live, yes. Oh, he was dealing for time in church. Yes, yeah. so Ooh. we have a lot of deaths in the community and um, a directly community to, to stand with these persons and their families. So mm. we do in this time of grief. Yeah, and you made a very important um,
comment uh, a minute ago when you talk about people's, as you pay tribute and condolences to these people. I express, I want to express my personal condolences as well to the, the, the relatives of these deceased persons. Um, you talk about people's life, um, health. <laughs> Niall, I don't know if you really know how important this thing is, mm -hmm. but um, people just continue to eat all kind of thing. People just continue to consume all kind of thing, buy all kind of thing to eat, not even recognizing that we have to reach a stage where people have to, to, to um, understand and read the labels on these things, to know the amount of sugar in this, the amount of the different names in which they call sugar. Like, I mean, we need to do a serious education plan you know, about how we challenge our constituents and the people in our community how to eat, what to eat, how often to eat, you know, how to deal with the diabetic, how you deal with your pressure and so on. You need to have a better relationship with the health center. We have the most health centers per capita in any other island in the Caribbean that I've been to, in the country, you know. All these health centers, have them more functioning, have them going out and not just meeting people. Let people come to the health center when they have the thing go wrong, when they suspect something wrong, you know. We have to have a whole new plan, how we treat it with health and our communities. Exercise is important, but how you eat, the sedentary lifestyle where we sit down every day and, and, and hardly do anything and we watch TV and we watch girl phones and on the internet and you know, everybody wants to sit down. More people should be going outside. There are few people who are, eat, are eating carefully, who I know. There are people who are doing exercise routinely and well, and even elderly people, you know, coming out. You see some pe senior people yeah. outside in the evening sometimes. People who did the aqua, aqua thing as well, those senior people. We really need to have a program with that. And, and that is something that me and your mother was talking about and Paul was talking about recently as well. But we could get to some of these things. But as an assemblyman, you in meeting and chatting with people, that is one of the main things you should try to, 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 to address as a member of the assembly. I don't know what you think. Well, um, I live my life that way. I, I believe in exercising. I, I swim at the Y. I spend time in the gym because, to me, my health is important. And it, besides the health factors, sometimes it is such a calming way to end the day. You know, you, you are able to release some of the stresses into the exercise and you are, it, it helps you with sleep. It, 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 there are many benefits to exercise, many. Mm -hmm. It's even a, it's a bit addictive as well. It's very difficult to start, but once you get into it, you start feeling off if, if you don't do it. So mm -hmm. exercise is very important. All right. Um, we go for a quick break. I'm advised that we should go for a quick break. And when we come back, we continue. And um, we look at some of your priority areas when you come back in the Tobago House of Assembly as a response as an assemblyman and some of your priority areas that you'll want some attention to be paid to when we come back from the break. Hear me back, folks, and um, viewers, listeners, wherever you are, all over the world, and so on. And let me see now that I'm always happy to see the comments and so on, some of them to me personally, some of them, have them on Facebook and so on, about the program. And I, I'm really happy. Some of them, some of the comments are really on spot. <laughs> and so on. So really, um, I really appreciate that, I must see. But Niall, we want to get to some of your priority areas and areas that, uh, that you feel that you want to focus more and more attention to. Well, the human resource is a very important resource and one of my priority areas is education and training. And coming out of that, the Plymouth Academy of Opportunities was born. It started out as a, in a, a community initiative, but the, the, the support and the response and interest was so overwhelming that it pretty much took off, you know? And one of the things that pleases me about this initiative is that it's not political. Because if you, if you looked at the, the opening of the Plymouth Academy, you would have seen people from non-political persons, You'd have seen persons who would have represented a different administration being part of it, you know, and we, we took pains to make sure that this initiative is not a political thing. So although I was 
involved, I tried to, 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 to be, make it as neutral as possible. Because sometimes politics spoils the, the, the reach of the, of the thing. And I would like it to, to be one that any Tobagonian that needs help can access. If you look at, at young persons, they would have been, there would have been many reasons why some of them weren't able to achieve what they would have liked to achieve. Some might have, might have been pregnancy in school. Some people learn faster than others. So it's, it's not that you are a failure. It's just that you would take some more time and may need more care and attention than others, you know? So this, this Primate Academy of Opportunities is one of my proudest achievements as an assemblyman to see you know networking was used my my mother a retired teacher was able to secure some lecturers to my good self i was able to get some people on board and to see that young persons within the community would be able mm -hmm. to access definitely educational classes and training and for free we just have to pay a registration for free these classes are free and i'm saying to all and sundry please do not waste the, the, the opportunity yeah. let us get a look at the, the the video the opening and some of the activities done especially at this early stage and the kind of contacts and reaching out that was done and the level of persons that contributing so far tobago easy bless it's said that victory comes from finding opportunities in problems. And the district of Plymouth Blackrock now has a new NGO where young people and even adults can reach their fullest potential. It's called the Plymouth Academy of Opportunities. Here's more. American poet and activist Amanda Gorman said, There is always light. If only we're brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. And these young people from the district of Plymouth Blackrock are brave enough to take the little steps to bring about a big difference in their lives through education. They've grasped the opportunities being offered by newly launched NGO Plymouth Academy of Opportunities. In the case of those who would have dropped out, some people would have gotten pregnant on the way. They want to start over and they believe they would make good on it. And so this is why Plymouth Academy of Opportunities was birthed. We offer a variety of subjects at the academy, English, math, science, social studies, art and computer science. It also offers courses in professional development and life skills. These classes are taught by volunteer teachers. They give up their time freely. In every situation, you need to be able to read for meaning, or as we say in the business, reading comprehension. The presence of this academy, I believe, can inspire hope and ambition in our, our citizens or, or in our neighbors, in our aunts or uncles, in our children. It will show them that they have potential to improve their lives and contribute to the development, not just of our community, but the, the neighboring communities. We have come together to empower our adult learners and provide them with the opportunity to upgrade their academic qualifications. This initiative is indeed a testament to the power of collective effort and voluntarism and might I dare say the indomitable spirit of community development. I salute the work of this team. I salute what is not that I also salute those that are interested in learning because you must agree that when you are informed you are expected to better perform. And, um, and, and so we, we can't have enough education, we can't have enough skills. This is being extended to the, the students out there as well. Feel free at any time to reach out to me so that I can assist you in any way possible. I am also here as the role of Chief Encourager. Please remember that not all races are for the swiftest. 
but for those who endure it to the end. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. It's been too long living, but I'm afraid to die. Cause I don't know what's up there beyond that sky. Cayman Islands Minister of Tourism and the Port Honorable Kenneth Bryan, who is also the chairman of the Caribbean Tourism. Yeah. Yeah, boy, this was very emotional for me and especially I've been talking to the people with respect to this this um, initiative and it, it, it blows your mind. I, especially as a former member of the assembly, as somebody from the community and somebody who's really so impressed about this whole Plymouth initiative, you know, and the number of personnel that f not even living in the community, you know, came and contributing business people, people who have no connections with the community, just love it. People who live in the States hear about it. And as I somebody who from the States who designed the flyer, first flyer and so on, you know, I I'm blown away by this level of support and comradery and community spirit. Yeah, it wasn't the States though. It was someone that currently resides in Canada. But the, oh, thing, okay. the thing about my district is that Plymouth has, Plymouth is blessed compared to the other areas in my district. And that is where the real work needs to be done, especially infrastructure work. Residents in Plymouth can pretty much drive into their homes. When you, but when you think about areas like Orange Hill, Roselle, um, Mount Hay, these areas have heavy infrastructure work to be done. Um, earlier, you mentioned that it was pretty much your district when you were in the, you were in the assembly. And some of the areas, if you, if you were to traverse them now, they will remind you of when you were in the assembly. And we are some 20, 20 odd years on. And to me, that is unsatisfactory. So my colleague, Trevor James, would have to, to help me out in a major way here. And I would continue to advocate on behalf of, of my residents. We have, especially the areas of the Orange Hill Road, which um, we kept a meeting there and we invited the Secretary for Infrastructure. And he was shocked as to the number of pe persons that turned out. And that, that goes to say that they are, with proper infrastructure, these areas could become developed, you know, and with development, you know, with people going there to live, they'll be, be have businesses, there'll be other knock-on effects, you know. Um, there are many persons, especially in the Orange Hill area, that own lands there that, that would like to, be, to build. But because of the terrible road networks, they aren't even a be able to get material to their, to their lots. And it is very important for me to to see this and have this out there because I do, So um, you're committed to get these things done as much as possible, as particularly during your term? As much as, as as humanly possible. I will continue to bicker, I will continue to advocate, I will continue to do what needs to be done to say what needs to be said because I, I am the representative of the entire district, you know, and sometimes my my Plymouth people <laughs> take it for granted because, you know, um, my neighbor string is cut in Plymouth and left up to them, they would appreciate it if their Plymouth boy would give them everything. But it cannot be done that way because it's not about representing one area. It's about representing the entire district. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, it's really a, be a task, you know, every assemblyman for that area had some major problem especially given the breadth and the depth and the area the different villages and communities you know it's, it's not easy for one assemblyman to deal with all these sort of things especially eh, if you're not a secretary especially you have to have good relationship with the necessary or the relevant secretaries to do these things but when you're an assistant i mean it's really does be more difficult for you i, I mean, 
I, I believe also it's a, a kind of a chicken and the egg, which came first, the chicken and, and the egg situation, because most times when they, you prioritize projects, you would prioritize it based on how much it's used, how, how many people live there. But if you don't get it done, then that would, situation would remain the same because mm -hmm. you're, you're not fostering a situation for people to live there. So I think that we need to, to do, if you look at when US President Joe Biden was first elected, one of the first things he started doing was roadways because they understand connectivity and, and mm -hmm. transportation and infrastructure is what leads to a society growing. So that's, that's just me doing my bit and yeah, saying yeah. my bit there. So have, you, have you seen any level of poverty as you come to look at some of your private areas? Any level of poverty or to what extent do you see poverty as a major issue in, in these areas? I mean, you see people driving around with their fancy vehicles or living in some nice house. But how many people take time to look at those other persons who some of them may be living in almost like squalor? Well, in, to the division aspect, Mr. McFarlane, we have a social pro housing program. And we would have gone across the entire island. And to some of the conditions that people are living in, it's, it hurts your heart. It would bring tears to, the, to your eyes. And that, that is one of the things that, that make, makes, give me, energizes me to do my job. Mm -hmm. When you're having bad days, you look at the situation and say, no, it, things aren't so bad for you. Eh? There are people that are depending on you to help their situation. There are persons whose houses are, are pretty much on stilts, you know, and the, the current economic situation just does not allow mm -hmm. for them to, to own a home. And that is where we as the assembly have to bridge that gap. We have to really help the vulnerable ones in society, not mm -hmm. just the ones that are, are mismanaging their situation and then running to us for help. We need to manage the situations of the really vulnerable ones mm -hmm. in society. I told, I brought to the attention of Zorisha, Ms. Hackett, and about a particular in, uh, um, situation, this boy Ford, he's, he have to, he's amputee, Husband he's Ford. amputee, Husband. and he live in a situation that is really needs some urgent attention. I mean, he came and looked for me the other day and, and so on, and we tried to help as much as he could with that situation. But I think the, 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 the assembly or the representatives and the various responsible social services, URP and these people could play a major role in transforming that boy's life, that man's life. His son, his mother died, you know his mother died. He was living with his mother. And now this man has two feet amputated. <clears throat> and the area where he's living, he, can't even use a, he couldn't even use a wheelchair that was given to him inside his small, scrumped and, I don't want to say dreaded space. But this need urgent intervention. And I'm sure there may be other people like that who may be not as bad as that, who really need some special intervention and early. You know, we can't just go through the process. I'm sure if you ask Niall, not Niall, um, not see, to listen, look at the situation and see if you could ask URP. There are one social gang in URP that deals with these kind of things in terms of improving the man's physical space. There's social services that I'm sure has some facility the man don't get social services anymore, anything from that, and he's not getting any pension, he will age pension yet. So you can imagine, absolutely no income. So these are special cases in my book that the, the assembly, the reach of the assembly, the resources of the assembly should be used to make this man a little more comfortable. Yes, I, I totally agree with you, Mr. McFarlane. The um, situation of, of Mr. Oswin Ford is, <clears throat> has not passed us. He he has received assistance from Ms. Hackett as, as a representative. He has received assistance from myself as well. But the, the, um, as, as you said, there are processes that need to, we need to go through, but we are aware of his situation and we will continue to work on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's another, people, another family in Golden Lane that is going through this kind of thing. From time to time, you just hear these people just come to you in tears. They get a ride with somebody 
with a big one call you, come and see this thing for me, please. Come and see the situation, you know. I'm finally going, I can't remember the name of the people, another serious state of affair. But these are sometimes you may look and see people around, oh, everybody driving, nice roads here, the street, everybody nice in some house and thing, you know. But maybe you should look at the back of some of these streets or some streets that maybe you ain't reached yet with no electricity running and no water, you know. And that kind of thing. They still have one or two or pockets of that kind of thing in some of these communities. I'm not saying all of that in your constituent or your district, but the general Tobago community. We just can't sit back and say, oh, Plymouth look nice. Inside Plymouth, we're going beneath the issues what we just see and search out some of these people who are really in need of our help. All right? What's the situation like in terms of crime? and jobs. You see all the people talking about jobs and so on. Are we using the, 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 the Plymouth Opportunities, the Plymouth Academy for Opportunities, to let people know that they have to get up, develop skills and do just badger you for a sunrise? Is sunrise that is called it? Early morning. morning job? You, you know? How are we getting people to change that? That kind of culture? Another serious issue, you know? Well, as I said, education and training is definitely a major part of that. Um, one of the things that I as an area representative has, has encountered, and things like these could be a bit of a turn-off. Someone would ask you for, to help them to get a job. You would reach out to, to private sector people that you know are in, in need, need of, of employees. In need of employees, yeah. And they would, some of them would just bluntly refuse. And that says to me that you don't really need a job. You know, because everyone cannot work early morning. And mm -hmm. I, I don't like the idea of early morning anyway, but we, we need to, to grow Tobago. We need to be able to move forward. And Tobago cannot move forward with an early morning work mindset. You know, and that is, yeah, I'm not looking down at that sector of employment because for a thriving society and you, all parts, you know, you need your masons, your carpenters. As a matter of fact, skills people are the, piece, are the persons that are, are making the most money right now. And if you are into a job for money, I'm saying this to the young people, get a skill. Because I, I can't think of how many people I know that are paid $1,000 a day. Other than tradespeople, barbers, these, these, these are the persons that are able to make a lot of money through their skill and are able to make money no matter the conditions, you know, because they are able to work for themselves, they are able to set their own agenda. And, and um, looking back, that is one of, of the biggest regrets that I have, is not actually having a skill. And it is something that at my age, I am trying to work on because I'm trying to, to get my electrical certificate. So I'm just saying that skills are a way out and we need to to get a different mentality in terms of the work ethic if mm -hmm. if we are to move to the go forward mm -hmm. definitely maybe we can have an island <laughs> paying people just to, to 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 do a few hours work when they come sometime i think and the other is here where the ghost gangs but i could check out that with another secretary <laughs> when the time comes you know you have ghost gang on this island like if well not happening you know people just Stay home and get paid. They don't even come into work and say for a few things. Just stay home and get paid. That had to cut out. Cut right out. Um, the social assistance, job education and training. What about crime and, uh, and, and so on? And the proliferation of guns in the last few minutes that we have on the program. Crime and the proliferation of guns. Well, I'm so disappointed that, you know, the, 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 the community has been... Um, looked at from time to time when you hear a murder in the community or something you know you just or somebody from the community involved in some murder or some major crime activity you just show a thing on my my, my spirit but how we could treat with that as a, as a community not just you alone but how we could treat with that sort of thing well i believe crime is a social problem as well you know um if you you take a dig into into crime most of the, the persons that are, are doing this are people from the lower end of the scale. And as I said to you, it's, it's about love, it's about 
leadership and so and I am currently there seems to be a, a uptake in, in gang activity in Tobago and I really do not understand where this has come from um, no. it's something that, that bothers me to the core because we have people who, who would have grown up together now on, on warring fractions involving themselves in, in something that to me they know nothing about because if you look at, at this 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 gang culture it's very prevalent in Trinidad and people in Tobago are taking up this this culture of a, of of things that do not involve them and, and as I said they know absolutely nothing about mm -hmm. we have to um, implement more social programs to, to be able to to capture the youths that are uh, string and uh, and put them on the right path but mr mcfarling you can carry a horse to the water but you cannot make it drink eh? and that is where the, the i believe that the family influence how you how you are trained mm -hmm. is is how you would remember. and your level of brought up and your level of brought up see is what <laughs> what the family input is what keeps you what holds you because the influences are are always there it's not like the influence have the influences haven't passed in front of me, but but I've refused. Even if you may have done something, you it, it just feels wrong. If you know if you have a, a, a you are grounded and you have a, a correct core, a, a proper proper beliefs, even if you, you try to delve into it, it's like a homing device. It just brings you back to where you should be. You know? I would I would tell a story of, of my my grandfather he used to smoke and as a young person i took up his cigarettes he probably smelt it when i when i lit it and he came into the room he, he gave me one of the most resounding cocktails that i have ever gotten in my life and people say licks doesn't work but it worked because i've i've never entertained the idea after that Coming out of that also, he stopped smoking because he realized yeah, where, he almost, where he almost carried his, his grandson. So, you know, when you have, when you have grounded settings, it's, it's a, a better place to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, um, we out of time now, and um, I want to give you this opportunity. I want to thank you for, well, give you this opportunity to um, make some final comments about who just one minute of your time to take, make some final comments. Well, the entire interview ran past so quickly that we, um, we didn't get to speak much about the division aspect. And um, the public utilities would be the main thing under my portfolio. And I, um, I'm here as a happy person to say that we were able to do almost $3 million in rural electrification and street lighting. You know, and with the rise in crime, we are able to do our bit in terms of lighting up the community, making community a safer place. Um, al along the, the aspect of sport, we are um, able to pay for the lighting of the French Fort area. And we know that's our main exercise hub, you know, so it would allow for longer hours of exercise. You know, people wouldn't want to go up. At but you complete it right up to the top or you just halfway? It would be going all the way to the top. It has, it has not been done as yet. Due to the volume of work that Tiantec has, they are a bit we, we are putting them in the spot because they don't they do not have the, the workers to do all of the jobs at, at this time. So mm. some of, of, of the, the general public out there that would be calling in to follow up on, on stuff that they asked for, it has been paid for. We are asking you all to just give us a bit of time and tea and take a bit of time to do the works but they have been paid for so you um you can you all can be looking forward to a, a brighter night <laughs> mm -hmm. all, right. all right okay Niall, i just want to thank you very much for coming and explaining and giving the public an insight of this pleasant and hard-working person that you are and you come from a very good upbringing and your mother we know her to be an all-nonsense person and of course you want to give a tribute for this initiative that you are part of, uh, the Plymouth Academy for um, 
opportunities and so many other things that you have been doing in your community. I hope you're getting the necessary support, especially from your colleagues in the THA and the general community to finish them and to continue with other new things for the benefit and the development of our island. All right. So thank you very much. And see you next time. And it's we'll see from time to time in our community. Folks, this brings us to the end of the program this morning. And thanks to the technical staff for giving us some extra time there. And uh, we went over a little bit. And thanks to Niall again and all his supporting team and persons in the assembly who makes his work a little easier every day of the year. See you again tomorrow morning, God's willing. Another interview with another member of the assembly. Take care.